<coughs> and a very warm welcome to the English segment of the current affairs program. And as Talk to Nazan segment, we'll, we'll be once again talking about the Earn and Earn program in Japan, initiated by the Bhutan Overseas Employment Law. And today we'll be talking about mainly about the update, about the solutions that the ministry have found so far when it comes to the Earn and Learn program in Japan. Law. And to talk about this, I'm again joined by the Minister of Labor and Human Resources, Ugin Dojila. Uh, First of all, Your Excellency, if you could just update us about how far you all have reached when it comes to the investigation of how the Earn and Learn program is actually benefiting the, uh, our students down there. Uh, good evening to all the viewers and thank you, Sharaf, for giving uh, the opportunity to come to BBS and explain, uh, make, um, explain uh, about or rather clarify about the situation uh, of the students who have gone to Japan uh, under the Anand Land program. Uh, this is very timely and relevant because there has been so many um, discussions, accusations and that are happening in the social media uh, and, and in, the, in the mainstream media too. So given all the circumstances, I thought it was very timely and relevant that we come here and, and clarify and explain to the nation our take on the situation. Uh, well, uh, the last time we met, uh, I updated you on and the decision taken by the cabinet to defer the repayment of loans. Mm -hmm. uh, ever since uh, that time, uh, really about it has been about uh, a month and a half, I think. We have been working on actually implementing the decision taken by the cabinet. Last time when the decision was taken, it was taken at the cabinet level, really at a very broad. Uh, uh, level, but now having taken the decision, the Labour Ministry had to start working towards implementing that decision. It's at the implementation level that that things are more complicated, and therefore takes time. Uh, especially because, uh, as as uh, many would agree, the problem, the issue of this nature, a very complicated one, it requires um, proper planning, uh, deeper reflection. And, and we have to basically uh, uh, be very careful when we actually go ahead with the implementing such a decision, given the complexity of the problem. Also, uh, because uh, many stakeholders involved uh, in, this, in, in implementing this decision, the Royal Monetary Authority of Bhutan, the Bhutan Development Bank, the Royal Insurance Corporation of Bhutan, Ministry of Finance, um, the Ministry of Labor, the National uh, Pension, uh, NPPF, all these stakeholders involved. So right after the decision came out, we have had several rounds of discussion and consultation. Because unless you do a thorough consultation, unless you take stock of the pros and cons of implement, implementing that decision, unless you are able to persuade them and take them on board, it doesn't just uh, ordering them to do this does not work. So we wanted to make sure that all the inconveniences or the or the uh, the uh, inconveniences basically that could arise out of implementing this decision, uh, especially if we do it in haste without consultation, uh, I, I thought that wouldn't be a, a good idea because if after we have started implementing it, if it gives rise to uh, another uh, issue of that, that, that is intractable like the issue itself, then it won't serve any purpose. So we have had several rounds of discussions and we decided finally to go ahead with the implementation. And it was just today that the Prime Minister, Honourable Prime Minister signed the executive order to defer the loan repayment under certain terms and conditions. Yes. And we are happy that finally we are able to uh, move ahead with this decision. I hope uh, this will alleviate the, uh, the situation uh, of our students who are currently in Japan. We'll, um, I hope that this uh, helps to clarify the mess as there has been uh, uh, hovering around. Nasa, so uh, deferment of loan repayment is the only solution that you are looking to? Yes, because we feel that that is the best solution. Yes. Uh, given, because we have, it wasn't uh, uh, without uh, uh, proper thought or research and reflection that, that we came up with this uh, solution. I think this is the best solution that we can, the government can come up with. And I think this solution, this option is going to help our students. The, when I say that, um, I'll have to also give a brief context. It's a learn and earn program. There are two stages in this program. The first phase is the learning phase. The second one is earning phase. 
our students who are in Japan right now are in the learning phase right now. In the learning phase, uh, the the students were not really expected to be making money, uh, earning. Uh, yes, earn, but enough to pay the school fees, uh, pay uh, repay the loans uh, on installment basis, and to basically meet the living expenditure in Japan. Uh, if students are able to manage with that one, I think I would say that uh, at least in the learning phase, uh, the program has been a success. Yes. Uh, <coughs> the earning phase is the students are yet to enter the earning phase. After the end of March, uh, the a group of students, majority of them would have uh, finished their learning phase, at least in terms of the duration, the yes. number of months. So when they actually enter the earning phase, they are supposed to be given with uh, jobs, regular jobs in Japan. Now, if they do not get uh, jobs or I if after they get employed, they are not able to make their living or repay their loans, then that is a serious issue. Yes. And we uh, will acknowledge that, that problem. But right now, I think it's a little too early to... Uh, say that the program has failed, program has uh, b bad, and then people were taken for a ride with this problem. Yes, there are issues. And the issue right now is because students have to work um, and spend uh, money for uh, in, uh, to repay the loan, uh, school fees, meet all the expenditures, all at the same time, there's a little uh, too much of a burden, as I said last time. Uh, and we acknowledge that problem. That is the crux of the problem right now. Yes. So how can we solve that problem? By deferring the loan repayment. Yes. Because say, uh, the government uh, right now has decided, uh, as of now has decided to defer the loan repayment by two years, uh, give the department of two years for the university graduates and four years for the, those who are class 12 past students. What that means is that the, those university graduates will not have to worry about the loan for the next two years. Uh, and in the next two years, if they work hard, if, even if, if, if it involves learning the Japanese language, they'll have more time to learn the language, to find a job, and then basically make themselves comfortable before they start repaying the loans. Mm -hmm. It gives that that kind of opportunity. Mm -hmm. And also for class 12 students, they get that kind of opportunity, but for four years. And that includes, uh, because this applies, the deferment applies to those students who have come back to Bhutan as well. So even if they are back home in Bhutan, it gives them the opportunity, a uh, grace period, to focus on starting up a business, uh, uh, working, earning, and then start repaying uh, after a few years. So I think this is uh, a very uh, proper, um, uh, appropriate intervention as, per the, uh, as the government is concerned because it gives, it gives them the opportunity to be, grow independent before, before they start repaying the loan. It, I think they will also take it with a sense of pride. It, it indicates a sense of responsibility. And then if our young people, I have no doubt about this by the way, our young people are responsible, our young people have that sense of duty, our young people will only f be proud of being able to repay the loan on their own rather than expecting the government to be able to enter a thing. I don't really believe that uh, young people with so much of patriotism and energy would really uh, sound that pathetic. That's the, that's, uh, but there's also one thing that these young people went down to Japan with the hope that they will do something better in their lives. La. But now, uh, again, coming back to the loan deferment, la, uh, when will it come into effect? And okay. if you could talk about the terms and conditions of the loan <coughs> repayment. Um, it's a very relevant question. The grace period starts from today, yes. right from today. Uh, and the students have uh, three months to avail these facilities. They will have to complete all the formalities, the banking formalities, because they have entered, I mean, when they avail the loan, um, they have entered into an, an agreement with the bank. So now uh, the bank is coming up with, with an addendum uh, whereby uh, they agree to new terms and conditions, additional terms and conditions, terms and conditions that uh, make it possible for them to avail the deferment. So the bank has worked out those terms and conditions. They will have to agree to those terms and conditions uh, and fulfill other formalities that the bank might require them to fulfill, but without affecting the, the, the overall decision, the principle on which the deferment is being implemented. Uh, so from 1st of March till the uh, 31st of May, and they have three months to avail this facility. But um, um, they have the option to opt out of this uh, rescheduling exercise. They can continue with the present loan schedule. Uh, 
by the way, uh, our statement uh, last time was really, I mean, we still stand by our statement. Majority of the students are repaying their loans on time. So no issue with the repayment. Some have defaulted for maybe two, three months. Uh, it's only about 20 percent or rather 15 percent who, uh, who have had serious issues when it comes to the repay, repayment of loans. So majority of the people wouldn't even, uh, my assumption is, wouldn't even opt for this department facility. But for those who genuinely need this department, because they need a space, breathing space, two years, four years, those who really need it will take it. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I want to make it very clear to the parents and students who have able this loan, uh, to be very clear that the, while the government has uh, signed an executive order deferring the loans, it does not mean that you will have to by any means, by hook or crook, take this facility. It's really up to you whether you want to take it or not. If you feel that you are okay repaying the loans with the present loan schedule, nothing like it. Uh, but if in case you genuinely need it, uh, Please, um, AVLS facility, that will, this will help you uh, focus on, on your studies, and focus on finding employment and getting jobs uh, and making yourself comfortable before you really start paying or repaying the loan. Lesla, uh, these two get one thing, I think one thing, I'll have to make it very clear, I'll, I'll complete this because um, the EMI, the equated monthly installments, mm -hmm. after the grace period is over, for graduates after two years, for you. <coughs> for class 12 past students after four years, the EMI will be calculated, uh, fixed uh, by capitalizing all the overdues because they have defaulted on their loan repayment so far, will be fixed by capitalizing all those overdues, including the interest accumulated during the grace period. Because what this really means is BDBL, in order to facilitate this loan scheme, uh, provide them the facility loan facility has borrowed from the national pension NPPF and then if BDBL decides to defer this loan without uh, without uh, having to um, um, take the interest accumulated during that period uh, they won't be able to repay uh, the interest mm -hmm. they repay the amount to the NPPF so uh, the BDBL will have to charge them because because BDB has to pay to the NPPF, BDB has to take the money from the students. So the interest accumulated really during the grace period, just the interest amount, not the entire thing, mm -hmm. will also be capitalized after the grace period and then EMI will be fixed according to that one. Uh, what this means is that the students will have to pay, the, they will be solely responsible for paying the loan, uh, so after, even after the, the grace period. Yes, I want to be very clear about this one. Yes. So, uh, in any ways, the students are and the parents are at the losing end? No, it, they are not at the losing end. Uh, because there is uh, no guarantee that they will be see, employed after see, four one, years one or would three feel years. That, one would feel that they are at a losing end if you just look at the surface. Uh, if you, if you uh, do not uh, think deeply about this one, one would feel that way. I am not surprised. Mm -hmm. But let me take this opportunity to clarify again. It's really the cost and the benefit. What is the cost of nothing comes for free? There's no such thing as free lunch. Um, nothing comes without cost. And the cost in this case is the additional amount that the students would end up paying after the end of the grace period of two to four years. It's really the interest accumulated, just the interest accumulated during the two years or four years grace period. Just the interest. And for two years, um, the amount could vary, but roughly when we calculated last time, it came to around uh, 100,000 or so, 100,000, 112,000 or so, I don't remember exactly. That is the additional cost. That is the cost that the students will have to pay for availing that deferment, grace period of two, two, two years exactly, for that much, for four years it might be more, the amount might be more. Now which one do you choose? You really have the option, okay, if I were a student in Japan right now, uh, working two part-time jobs or one part-time job, um, having to repay the loan, having to pay the school fees, visa fees, having to send back money home uh, to the parents and siblings, I'm in so much of a stress and under pressure. Now, if all of a sudden my government decides to defer this uh, loan repayment by two to four years, that would give me two to four years to, I mean, of, of uh, of a time free of this tension, free of the pressure to repay the loans. And that would 
help me focus on my studies. Mm -hmm. Maybe send a few bu hundred bucks more to my parents back home. Uh, basically, to work less number of hours and then be mentally, physically, emotionally healthier. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm able to buy that kind of thing. And then in the next two years, I would, after I have completed uh, learning the Japanese language well, I might even get a job and start working in that job. And once I have started paying, uh, uh, getting earning, really, because after the learning phase, we enter into the earning phase, as I said, uh, with the amount of money that I would get from my job, especially if the job is in Japan, Loan repayment of, say, the additional the cost of just one lakh, 100,000, really is nothing. It's really nothing. But even if you were someone who returned home uh, and who wouldn't want to go back to Japan, it gives you two to four additional years where you don't have to worry about repaying the loans. And if you are really committed, if you're hardworking, if you're really serious about your life, if you are a responsible person, if you genuinely need this kind of facility, it's a long time where you can um, work on, uh, I mean, start a business, maybe uh, uh, get a job, or maybe explore other opportunities in some other countries. And the government will help you do that as long as you are willing to take the opportunities that we provide you. Yes. Within that time, they will have the time to heal themselves, t time to save money, and then when they actually start paying off after uh, repaying the loans after two to four years, they will be in a very comfortable position. Nice. That kind of opportunity it provides to the students if they really think about this deeply. Additional cost, but the benefit far outweighs the cost, we would like to think. Last, uh, like your excellency mentioned, is a two fees. First is learn and then is the earning fees. Yes. But yes. then uh, after they learn, what's the guarantee that they will earn and they will get okay. working visa down there? Well, now? as per the agreement, the but initially agent, when it yes. was planned, it was planned in such a way that they will earn uh, <coughs> while they uh, learn. I don't think so. I don't think so. That may have, might have been a perception, but if you go by the agreement, I don't think that, uh, because no, it's only logical, it's, it's very simple. You don't earn before you get job. Whatever you're earning from the part-time job, you're, you're earning and, then you, and that earning is not, may not be as good as uh, the earning from the full-time job, I mean, that's, uh, that's only logical, right? <laughs> Do not have to explain. But the agreement really the essentially says that after the students have undergone the language training course and have acquired the required level of uh, proficiency in the Japanese language, uh, the agent is supposed to give them, provide them jobs. Uh, after the learning phase, the earning phase would really start with the age giving them the jobs. Uh, after maybe one and a half years, two years, or two and a half years, depending on the duration that they have agreed upon. Um, now, I would think that having, because it's a legally binding document, uh, I would feel that the agent is really, uh, I would like to think that the agent is really working hard, uh, because especially given that uh, most of the students uh, would have completed their language training uh, by the end of March or early April, and by which time the agent should start giving them, providing them jobs as per the agreement. And uh, if they are not doing it, I think I would take this opportunity to uh, urge the agents, not just one agent, by the way, we have mm -hmm. two to three agents who actually facilitate this kind of program. We really ask them to take this very seriously. Uh, I do not really have to emphasize on this because it is required by the agreement which is legally binding. Now, if after this learning phase, if there are problems that arises out of, uh, because of some compli complications and failures in the earning phase, then that is that is something totally different from what we are talking about right now. Yes. Yes. Uh, Limpo, before. Uh, uh, but then again, let me let me. It's not just about the agent, by the way. The responsibility equally uh, falls on the students because mm, if the agent gives you a job and if you're not willing to take up a job. Uh, for for a variety of reasons, maybe you think uh, now agent is uh, uh, supposedly, elegantly corrupt, and therefore we don't have to listen to the agent, we don't have to work with the agent, and therefore doesn't really matter whether we agree to the agent or not. I think the onus is upon you to cooperate with the agent because you are basically the two parties who agreed to abide by the terms and conditions of the agreement. So you have to really work together. Unless you work together, um, uh, things will not be okay. And then I don't think anybody will benefit out of this if you start uh, playing a blame game and then let this opportunity pass by just like that. 
last uh, as we planned for this program like, we did manage to talk to some students who are currently in Japan oh, yeah. and then I believe they uh, completed the level of their study the language course and there's uh, this they, they are still not uh, provided with a job so uh, did you all manage to talk with them <coughs> Because like Limpu said, if they are not provided with a job, then the agent will be held responsible now. Uh, I think our understanding, our knowledge is that uh, the, they still have uh, at least a month, uh, mm -hmm. at, least at, the, to, uh, at least till the end of this month. Um, and uh, the, the uh, information that we get also is that the agent has already started providing them the job, providing them jobs. While we, are, um, I do not really have accurate figure on my uh, paper. I hear that about eighty uh, students or so have already uh, got regular jobs, uh, but the process has started. But maybe not all of them have got jobs. But uh, I think it's all only understandable that uh, at, after the end of your learning phase, uh, one, two, three months. Uh, Immediately, it would be a bit difficult to provide them jobs immediately, or maybe difficult to provide jobs to all of them. But at least, if that is being done, I think that is a good progress. But we will see how things develop and shape up. Uh, practically, Limpu, do you think it's a fair deal for the loan uh, deferment because uh, they will have to incur additional 100,000 after the deferment? Like, uh, uh, Limpu okay, mentioned what, what earlier, like, because, two uh, yes, two like, because there is no guarantee that those students who return back to Bhutan, they will be employed and they will be earning more than 15 or 16,000 in a month. Like, with the current interest rate, I believe they are paying 14,000, more than 14,000 per month. Like. But uh, see, I would think that with this deferment facility, they get additional two to four years to stay in Japan. If they work hard, if they haven't attained the level of proficiency in the Japanese language, it gives them additional time to acquire the level of proficiency in Japanese language. It gives them uh, adequate time to, uh, uh, to really uh, find job. They may not be able to find their jobs uh, immediately or, or they may not be able to, the agent may not be able to provide all of them with the jobs. But, but don't wait for the agreement to just come out like that to life like that. Mm. If you start working on your own, yes, ultimately the responsibility is on the agent to provide them the jobs. But if you feel that the agent is, uh, I mean, if you somehow are not able to wait for the agent to provide a job, I think you could start uh, finding your own employment as long as you have the language proficiency and the connections and the opportunities there. I think people have to start taking up the jobs. If they're in Japan, if they start working, get a, a job in Japan, one lakh really uh, may not even be a month's salary for them. That's, that's uh, a very broad uh, uh, take on how much they would earn once they're in the regular job, but not more than two months' salary. Yes. So you are getting two years and ha you have to sacrifice only one or two months' salary to pay for that one. Yes. Don't you think that is fair? I mean, maybe for those who are coming back, it may be a bit difficult. But even for them, if they work hard, uh, if they start working, uh, taking the responsibility, within two years you would have saved uh, enough. Uh, but we would really want to, if at all they find it difficult, as long as they are ready to take the responsibility, if they, as long as they, uh, they are ready to um, work hard and commit themselves, uh, commit to do well in life, be responsible. I think the government is there to help them, whether they are here or in Japan, ready to support them with the employment opportunities Last. to the extent possible. Last, uh, looks challenging. Uh, now of course. Of course. <laughs> now, wh what happened to the issue. team that who was supposed to visit Japan now? About the team? Yes, uh, last time Limpu uh, in the studio mentioned that a team uh, labor um, officials from Ministry oh, of oh, Labor yeah, will yeah. visit Japan. Yeah. So uh, we heard in today's news that it's been postponed. La, so why is it? La? Okay. It has been postponed because you will have to sequence things, right? Uh, we have started uh, uh, implementing the deferment only from today. Mm -hmm. Now, what use would be, what sense would it make for us to go to Japan without even implementing the decision that could be implemented at, at home? We could have taken maybe a month or two longer if we were to uh, uh, prioritize uh, Japanese, Japan visit over this one. 
so we had to first of all prioritize implementing the deferment at home. Once we get, once we are done with this, uh, that work on the on the starting on starting the implementation of this deferment, then uh, the Japan visit. Uh, uh, the Japan visit has to come after that basically, that, that was the take uh, within the ministry and the government. Now on the Japan visit that we have planned, I think there seems to be a misperception uh, uh, in the media and uh, in the public that the team was going there, was supposed to go there solely to investigate the learning and program and the situation of the students on the ground. That was not the fact, uh, that is not true. Yes. Uh, we said that we'll go visit Japan, but we had a much broader objective of advancing the uh, diplomatic relations between the government of Japan, uh, the country of Japan, and our own country. Um, on uh, the side of the Ministry of Labor and Human Resources in particular, we wanted to explore employment opportunities. We wanted to uh, work on other programs that we are working on, employment and some other maybe uh, one of the, uh, the objective the, that we had really was to also explore institutional linkages between the institutes in Japan and ins uh, technical training institutes within the country. So it, has, it had a much broader objective. But while we visited Japan, if we just uh, focus on those broad objectives and not uh, meet the students on the ground, it, it, it wouldn't have been right. Uh, it was only I mean, it sounded only right for us to think of visiting um, the students as well at the same time. So visiting the students was really, and uh, investigating the situation on the ground was really a part of the objective. So because firstly we had to implement, go ahead with this implementation of the department first. Secondly, we had to be ready with other things as well uh, to accomplish other objectives as well. That is why we had to postpone it. And I think it will, since this implementation is going on, we don't want to mix those two things up. And, and as, we, as we implement this and we are done with this one, then uh, we will visit Japan. Yes. We haven't cancelled it. People thought we cancelled it and then, then we just told them. It's still on. It's still on. That's the, now, uh, we are out of time. The last one minute, if you want to add anything. Well, um, the government... Uh, some people accuse us of the persistent inaction, uh, the negligence, and the indifference. Nothing, no other issue has kept me more preoccupied than the learning and program issue in Japan over the past three months. I could have as well used these three months to come up with newer youth engagement and employment programs. We are really concerned about this. I want the public and the students and the parents and all the parties concerned to know that this government is really concerned about the situation in Japan. We have also worked hard. Uh, we have had several rounds of discussions with all the stakeholders to come up with this implementation plan and we have from today started implementing it. But despite all the best effort that we are making, this program will the problem, the issue will still remain if other stakeholders do not take the responsibility. Uh, on the government part, we are trying to our best to make the problem smaller. But there are also other stakeholders, interest groups who are trying to make the problem bigger. Uh, keep on trying to make the problem bigger. Uh, and you know, we are in the divergent directions. If we are not able to converge, uh, work together, I think the issue will remain. And I really urge... Uh, all the uh, concerned uh, um, students, parents, and all the stakeholders to work hard for the agent to uh, keep on working hard and doing, uh, delivering a duty for the students to keep on studying hard and then uh, trying to find employment in Japan. Or for those who have returned home, also think of other ways to meaningfully keep yourself engaged and then think of ways to make income so that you can uh, uh, repay the loan with pride, uh, with a sense of responsibility. Uh, and really, um, the onus really is with the students uh, yourself. And I hope you will uh, uh, understand the deferment facility in proper perspective. And then if you feel that this is beneficial, you will take up this facility. And for those of you who want to continue repaying your loan under the present loan schedule, you, are still, you still have the option. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for the Lass, opportunity once again. Lass, Lass Limpo, thank you so much for your time. Like Limpo mentioned, the loan deferment 
there's an option whether you want to opt for, whether you don't want to opt for ETLA, but uh, after two or four years, the amount is going to get higher. Uh, but uh, like Limpo said, there will be there a deferment period. Yeah, the, the cost to the yes, the, yeah, yeah. Like, Lasla, Lasla, thank you so much for your time, Lasla.